Okay, how many of you worked on this over the weekend? Nobody? One person. Or is that three fingers you're holding up or two? <laughs> well, one and two halves. Yeah. Okay, so I was just curious how many of you have been looking at this. I know we didn't talk very much about this, but the way this works is we're going to derive using Darcy's Law an expression for the skin factor and the skin pressure drop is the difference between here and here. Now, because of the convention that we use, the pressure drop for damage is always positive and the pressure drop for stimulation is always negative. So the pressure drop here for damage, or sorry, for stimulation is negative. The pressure drop for damage is positive. And in theory, we should be able to drive the pressure to zero if we totally constrict the flow. On the other hand, the maximum stimulation that it can occur with this model is only going to be, and of course this is two radial donuts, is only going to be a horizontal line where the permeability is in fact infinity, as you can see over here. So if you substitute infinity into this equation, this is what happens. Infinity, this whole thing will go to zero, and that's what we're left with. Now on the other hand, there is no maximum, quote unquote, because if you say that Ks goes to zero, then this whole term goes to infinity, and of course the maximum skin factor is infinity. Dilhan, what's the highest skin factor you've ever seen calculated? Six zero. So Dilhan says the highest he's ever seen is plus 60. Anyone else? Probably not, because you don't have that kind of experience. I've seen plus 90 on a data set we have. I've seen plus 250 in the literature from some wells that had uh, damage offshore. These were some wells that were going to be uh, stimulated uh, with acid in a specialized technique that uses carbon dioxide slugging or a, a pill of carbon dioxide in front of it. But I think you could argue that once you see these levels of damage that things are pretty grim. Uh, in the case of the well that had a 90 skin factor, what they did is they hydraulically fractured it. This is a relevant discussion because when you hydraulically fracture, you penetrate beyond the skin zone. Now this is not drawn to scale because this skin zone, what do you think the distance is for the skin zone? Let's take a quick poll. Is the skin zone 100 feet deep? 10 feet deep? One foot deep? Okay, so somewhere between one and ten. Is it less than one? Could be. Is it more than ten? That would be pretty tough. How would you achieve a depth of skin with a radial model of more than ten feet? That would mean that you had to damage the formation ten feet out. You're, someone was making a comment? What do you say, Winky? Nothing? Okay. Anybody? What's that? You could go probably 50 feet, maybe 100 with a gas condensate system where you drop significantly below the dew point. And what's happening there, I hope I draw this correctly, is you're looking at the reservoir pressure profile and radius. You know, you've got a huge pressure drop here. I'm going to borrow this red line right there, okay? So then you look at the saturation of oil that comes out of this as a function of radius, and it's going to be very high, especially, let's say that you, uh, the uh, dew point pressure is way up here. Well, that's too high, but I don't want to redraw it. So this is the dew point pressure. So below the dew point pressure, you start dropping out liquid, right? So you're going to have a range of one to zero here for the saturation of condensate. And it could be, you know, floating around here 
and then it'll just peel off to zero like that or maybe not quite that bad. You know, something like that maybe. So it's conceivable that you could have a highly uh, dense saturation of condensate out some distance away from the, the well. How do you remediate that? How do you get rid of it? Sorry? I didn't even see your lips move. Which one of you dummies said that? Oh, gotcha. Good. Okay. How do you remediate it? Not sure. Not sure. Could you be, uh, you know, give us a couple of options that are floating around in your head? None floating right now. Yeah. Maybe an atom bomb. That would be pretty cool. How about you? I don't know. I'm still thinking about Valentine's Day. <laughs> well, since I didn't see you, and I can only suppose you were stalking me, <laughs> I, I feel pretty lucky. <laughs> How about second row? How about if we inject, you guys had 310, right? How about if we inject a whole lot of lean gas? Will we cause that condensate to vaporize? Yep. Will we get it all? Nope. So what happens when you put the well back on production? Here it comes again. And this has been done in experiment. It's been done in the field. I remember there was a case history in Indonesia of the Arun field where a buddy of mine convinced management to inject several million, well, it was actually probably a billion cubic feet of natural gas into a well to see if they could remediate the condensate blocking. And sure enough, it worked like a charm until they produced about as much as they injected. And here comes the condensate again because it's a pressure phenomenon, but it's also a rock property phenomenon. Some of you had me for PETI 311. Once you get liquid in those small pore spaces, is it ever gonna come out? No, not unless you incinerate the core or, or the rock or something like that. So what's another option? Real quick, hydraulic fracturing. In the case in Indonesia, they didn't have the equipment to hydraulic fracture. I know you're saying, well, how can that be? It was in Bandar Aceh, which is one of the places that was hit by that tsunami, and they preferred to use acid stimulation. And they pretty much tried everything under the sun. They tried gigantic boreholes. They under-reamed the wells to two, three feet in diameter. They injected the Pacific Ocean of acid. They uh, drilled corkscrew wells, they drilled horizontal wells. They did everything except hydraulic fracturing. They did do acid fracturing, but acid fracturing is problematic. And what does that mean in English, Mr. Stone? That either works or it doesn't work. And if it doesn't work, you wasted your money. There were a few cases where it didn't work at all. There were some cases that had dramatic improvement, but sooner or later, you're not gonna penetrate that far out in the reservoir. So here it comes again, same thing. This is why God invented the so-called frack pack, would be to reduce the pressure drop in the reservoir near the wellbore. So those of you who go to work offshore, you're going to hear a lot about frack pack. Now, most of the time, frack packs are put in place for what reason? For the reason that you create an unstable region near the wellbore where the permeability or the, or the rock collapses and basically eliminates the porosity and permeability. This is that abnormally pressured reservoir phenomena, N not necessarily abnormally pressured, but it could be unconsolidated or slightly consolidated. How do you repair that? You can't. So in order to mitigate that, people will fracture stimulate into the reservoir first, put a, high, a very high conductivity, very short hydraulic fracture in the reservoir, thus reducing the pressure drop. So this model that we're talking about, this cylinder, it really doesn't have a whole lot of practical applications because things don't happen in a cylindrical system or a cylindrical manner. I mean, some things do. This condensate banking problem is probably going to be cylindrical. Even the formation deformation problem is probably going to be symmetrical. But let me make a very clear, articulate statement about damage. It's kind of like we talked about the other day. If you think that you're about to do something that could cause harm, then stop. It's better to not have to do anything to remediate something 
It's better to plan ahead. That's why most wells are frack packed now in advance. If they know there's going to be a problem, think about these things. Don't, you know, what is the old adage? Uh, an ounce of uh, prevention is worth a pound of cure. That is exactly what I want you to think about with formation damage. I've got stories where people pump things down the well and basically kill the well for the rest of its life. I've got stories where people decided it's maybe like Mr. Stone here, he's going to try to get a promotion out of this new well. He convinces the staff at the wellhead to, during the test to open the well up to a maximum rate. Bang, the well stops producing. They send the camera down, and the whole thing's collapsed. You think you're going to get a promotion? Yes, it's called to being a bum, OK? <laughs> so, all right. And the way we construct this, as you know, is we use Darcy's Law, and we write an equation for each zone, and then we couple them. The quiz question today, Dilhan, that we give them does what? It has a zone of permeability that changes, correct? Like this? Is that how we did it? Yeah. So you have to integrate the permeability as a function of distance. It is a piece of cake. What are you smiling about? Speak louder. It is, because all you have to do is you have a function that says k is equal to what? <laughs> yeah, me neither. Okay, so you'll see it soon enough. Don't want to <laughs> remove too much mystery. It's good to hate me. Okay, so now let's go back and look at a zoom-in view of this. This is the base solution. This is a solution we're going to derive about this time next week. Can I hear a hallelujah? Yeah, we're going to derive this. Generally speaking, delta P is going to be a function of A plus B times the log of, uh, of some function of R and T. Not sure exactly what that is. We'll work it out later. That's what this red line is. Okay. Now if we damage it, we can drive the permeability in the zone down, then we can change the profile like this. If we stimulate it, then we can drive the profile up. If we use some sort of a maximum, make permeability equal to infinity, then there's no pressure drop. The pressure at this point and the pressure at this point are the same. There's no pressure drop. So that's the maximum improvement we can have. Now, Mr. Stone, because you've already let me use you today, I'm going to use you again, OK? We want the pressure from this point in the reservoir to go up as it goes to the wellbore. Is that possible? I'll give you a hint. If you say yes, you're going to regret it. If you say no, you're going to have to explain it. No, there's no way. Sorry? Oh, you're... I sense a love connection. Why don't you two help us out here? You want to help him? Oh. Yeah. This is Russian way, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so tell me why that cannot happen. Well, because you wouldn't flow it. That's correct. The pressure gradient cannot change from being, you know, positive towards the well to suddenly switching signs. It's not going to work. So how does something actually happen like this? Well, it probably means we don't have any idea of what the true distribution of pressure in the reservoir is. It's probably a completely different solution. So for the sake of argument, this is no-no land. This is unrealistic our, for our model. Our cylindrical model does not represent this. Okay. Now, so far, we have talked about using a cylindrical model to represent skin. Everybody ready for something new? Second row, what are we going to do next? We're going to cheat. 
How are we going to cheat? Class, how are we going to cheat? We're going to say that there's such a thing as an effective wellbore radius or an apparent wellbore radius, RWA, and it's equal to RW multiplied by the exponential of negative S. So here again is our solution. This is the one and only solution. Okay? Now, we don't care what happens in the reservoir. We only care what happens where, Dilhan? At the well bore. Okay? And so what we're going to do is if we had a cylindrical source solution, the pressure profile in the reservoir might look like this. But what we're going to do is we're going to cheat. And the only thing we care about is the red line. So we need to move this point onto the red line. How do we do that, Mr. Stone? We trick it, and we tell it to evaluate RWA at that radius. We don't care what it looks like in the reservoir. We only want to match the pressure, OK? So when we do that, we get that pressure, OK? Now, the same thing is true up here. This is the pressure distribution for stimulation. Now, how do we make the pressure respond to this? Well, we have to trick it. So we evaluate RWA at this point, and we sample the solution here. How many of you, this doesn't make any sense at all? Okay, an honest man. Explain how you could do this more easily. We have an equation that governs the system. So what we're going to do is we only want to match the skin pressure drop. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a trick, a mathematical trick, the derivation of which is given in your notes. And so we have a true pressure distribution that looks like this. But we're not interested in the pressure distribution. We're only interested in this value. This value must lie on the red line. So we're going to trick it mathematically, and we're going to sample the red line at this position. Same is true over here. We have a pressure distribution here. We have a point at the well bore. But what we want is we want to match that point to this. So we're going to sample this at the so-called apparent well bore radius. The way this is going to work is you can only measure things at the well bore. But you can trick the equation because it's valid everywhere. You can trick the equation into giving you an answer somewhere else. Okay, I got to move on to pseudo steady state. Is everybody ready? Don't forget to remind me, Dilhan, when to stop. Dilhan's coming down because he's getting nervous. Yes, Master. Louder. What's the point of cheating? It's a convenient point. Um, it's not used for anything other than transient radial flow. And would allow you to say that if I have a skin factor of, OK, let's say that our wellbore diameter is a foot. And I have a skin factor of plus 17. What's the equivalent diameter? of the well. It'll be this pencil. Now let's say I have a wellbore diameter of a foot and I have, this is wrong, but I'll throw it out there, a, an acidized well can be about minus three. A fractured well can be up to minus seven. But then it's not really correct because you can't really model a fracture with a radial flow system. But let's say that I throw negative seven into that equation. Everybody ready? Let's do this the easy way. Who's got a calculator? Steven, you got a calculator? OK, so on one hand, we have S is equal to some number. We can say plus 17 and minus 7 RW is equal to 1. We'll keep it in feet, OK? No, no, half a foot, sorry. 0 0.5, 0 0.5.
the equation is RWA is equal to E to the minus S multiplied by RW. Uh, let's, let's just make it one so it'll be simple. One foot, one foot. And then so RWA is equal to RW E to the minus S. Somebody tell me what E to the minus 17 is. Sorry. And E to the plus 7. Sorry? Do you have a number? Negative 8? Okay. So 4.3 E to the minus 8. Okay. What's E to the plus 7? 1,000? 1,096. So here, it's about like a human hair. And here, I don't know, it's uh, like the Eiffel Tower. Anybody from France? I probably just spelled that wrong. That's okay. Nobody's grading me. So in one case, the wellbore has the equivalent of nothing. In the other, it's gigantic. I picked these numbers to be ridiculous. So now do you see what we're trying to do? And what the reason we use it this way is so also because we're the pressure distribution equation is a logarithm, we can make this substitution. So it's kind of a neat little way to trick it. Can you think of any other reason that we do this? No, that's pretty much it. Okay. All right, everybody ready for pseudo steady state? So we did the, the limbo thing last week. The definition of pseudo steady state is given here that the pressure change at all points in the reservoir is equal to a constant. <clears throat> Do you actually think this is going to happen? Let me test your intuition. Is this going to happen? How can the pressure distribution and the entire reservoir, I'm not going to make you stand up again, but how can, it, how can it change at the same rate? What's the first condition? The rate has to be constant. Because if the rate is constant, the mass flux out is constant, the system's in equilibrium, then the pressure should change at the same rate at all points. We know that the rate's never constant, but for pretend, we're going to say the rate is constant. Okay? So this is different pressure levels at different times. So the pressure level drops at the same rate for all points in the reservoir. Now, what is this R bar is equal to 0 0.55? That's another one of them little weird things. That's the location of P bar. But it doesn't matter because it's only for a circle and God knows why you care. But the, I mean, because we don't know anything as a function of distance, we only know it as a function of pressure. So, you know, this is just a little artifact, but it's in the derivation and the old notes, which this is taken from. Anything else you want to add? No? All right. So here's where the love is. We're going to cover this again on Wednesday. Let's do, uh, oops, sorry for scratching myself there. Let's talk about what these pressure distributions look like. Here's the pressure distribution for a case produced at a constant rate during transient flow. So what you're seeing is at 1.77 hours, this is a pressure distribution. At 13.3 hours, This is a pressure distribution. At 65 hours, oops, sorry. This is a pressure distribution. At 300 hours, plus or minus, this is a pressure distribution. What are these points, class? Somebody impress me. What is this point? 
this point, this point, this point. That is the fictitious location of PI, of the initial pressure. Okay? We call that the radius of investigation. How would you use the radius of investigation? Second row. Have a group hug and tell me. Third row. Mr. Gorin, did you get a haircut? Looks good. Yeah. So how are you going to use this? Why would the position of the pressure distribution be important to you? I think I just said that. Why would it be important? Uh, there's no skin here. Let's ask the Kazakhs. Ready? I was teaching a short course in Aktau University one time. And I'm teaching, and the reservoir engineering manager's there. And we start talking about pressure distributions and how he designed the test to be three days long. Okay? Three days. And he said, after three days, I can see at least 500 meters into the reservoir. 500 meters into the reservoir. Because the permeability of the reservoir was about, what, a Darcy. Okay? It's heavy oil. He forgot that part. And after three days, because this plot is different for every case, where was the line for three days? Where was the radius? It was at 17 feet. So after three days of producing the well, the pressure distribution had propagated somewhere about right here. Because it depends on permeability, porosity, and compressibility. That's where it was. Now tell us a story about Kazakhstan. You have to produce and you have to have pressure buildup tests on your wells. The government requires it. But if you're only seeing 17 feet at three days, how long are you going to have to produce to see much further than that? How long to, to, to see 170 feet? It's a square relationship, so it'll be at least, what, 10 times as long? So this is going to be tough. All right? Now, what do you think about the distribution during another flow stage? And I apologize, I don't have, uh, I only have two cases in pseudo steady state. This is for a logarithmic linear rate profile. So the rate profile here is logarithmic, sorry. It's Q and LNT is a straight line. So that's what you get. That's kind of weird because it actually flips over, right? The pressure goes back up. All right, nobody's interested in that. They just want their quiz. Here's the another. Now this is a constant wellbore pressure case. The wellbore pressure is constant, and look what happens. Mr. Goins, you want to throw a lifeboat to somebody? Or are you going to take this one on? I think you should throw a lifeboat. Who's your worst enemy in here? Where's Clayton today? Where is he? That's not the same one. We got two Claytons? 
So how do we refer to him? Uh, okay, dummy. <laughs> that was pretty good, huh? I thought so. All right, so Clayton number two, you ready? If the pressure is always constant at the well bore, then as a function of time, it's propagating out like that. The position here, 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 and here is that radius of investigation, right? For an A in the course, okay? Tell me. Is the slope getting bigger or smaller? Okay, very good. That's not the A, though. <laughs> you ready? What's that slope directly proportional to? No idea? I bet you will in a moment. It's directly proportional to rate. Darcy's law says Q is equal to a constant times dp dr, correct? Now, if we take this point, this point, this point, that point, so the rate is dropping. But this equation, this concept still seems to be valid. That's kind of cool. We're going to, don't forget, we want to talk about this again when we do transient profiles. Okay? Is that kind of interesting? Not really. But it make you think, the next time somebody asks you, what the pressure distribution looks like in the reservoir, you're going to remember that the linear part is directly proportional to rate. Okay? And if I go back two slides, you're going to be able to explain to the class why these are all the same. Why are these all the same? Thank you, Clayton. Okay. So all of these have identical slopes. Q is equal to some constant times dp dr. There it is, right? You were going to get a lifeline to him anyway? Yeah. But you already did the hard part. Why'd you let him take the easy part? You're just a generous human being, huh? I see that. All right, we're going to cover the rest of this on Wednesday. You ready to give out the quiz? Everything off your desk.